Hey tech enthusiasts and home lab heroes, are you running a server from home? Awesome, but are you really sure it's secure? In today's digital landscape, leaving your home lab vulnerable is like leaving your front door wide open to cyber threats. Think about it, your precious data and your personal projects all at risk. But don't panic, because in this video we're diving deep into the critical security measure you absolutely need to implement. ClamAV. This powerful open source antivirus is your first line of defense against nasty malware and viruses that could compromise your entire home lab setup. We're going to walk you through the easy step by step process of installing ClamAV, running your first scan to detect hidden threats, and then get this we'll even automate your security with a weekly cron job. That's right, set it and forget it protection. No more manual scans, just peace of mind knowing your home lab is working hard and staying safe. So if you're ready to level up your home lab security, take control and safeguard your valuable data, then stick around. This is the ClamAV tutorial you've been waiting for. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is run the install command. Now I've actually bundled a few commands together, as you'll see here, which essentially creates all the directories and changes ownership to ClamAV so that you don't get any of the nitty gritty setup problems that you do occasionally see from amateur perspectives. So again, this video is for the amateur, um, but feel free to follow along if you're seasoned as well and see if you learn anything new too. So essentially, this is like I say, it's going to create the directory, it's going to change the ownerships. It's also going to stop some services, start some others. And then it's also going to create some files and just put some things in here that will get us going. So all these commands will be in the description below for you. You'll find them on my GitHub as well. So it's just an easy copy and paste job. And let's run that now. So the first step is going to be updating our repository, which this command does for us creates all the directories and then we'll open up uh, in nano the fresh clam conf um, file uh, which is essential to getting this up and running now fear not i will put in the description again below the basic uh, configuration uh, file you can have a look into this uh, for yourself if you want to um, you'll find all the details on my github again link below but essentially this is just the very basic um, configuration file required to get Clam AV up and running. Once we've done that, we're going to click Control and O on the keyboard and then Enter, which will save the configuration file. And then we'll do Control and X to get out. At this point, what we're going to want to do is update the database. So we're going to run the following command. If I clear the screen, sudo fresh clam. This will download the latest definitions up. Update, uh, and install it into our system uh, and other configuration files that it needs as well. Now you will get at the end of this a little warning, uh, which is basically saying that it uh, Clam D was not notified. You don't have to worry about that. That is just the order of the way we started and stopped certain services at the beginning, which was necessary for the installation. If you were to run that command again, you'll see there is no such warning because the service is now running. At this point, ClamAV, for all intents and purposes, is installed. Um, you can now run the scan command, which I'll do here. Um, all this basically does is tell it to scan recursively, sound off a bell notification if it detects any infected files, which is why it's got the I there, which is just says output infected files only. And then the directory we want it to scan. In this case, I'm getting it to scan my dockage directory because that's a relatively small size directory to scan and output on the screen for yourself. So if I just clear the screen before I run that command, and then we can run that command. And as you can see, it took about um, eight seconds there, just over. Scanned it, it's got quite a lot of virus definitions in the database. Um, it scanned 90 files and found zero infected, which is beautiful. So there you go, you've got your Clam AV scanner. You can modify that um, scan command to scan any of your directories manually whenever you want to. But you say, Keith, what if I want this to run a scan on a regular basis? Well, that's easy. We can sort that out for you too. What we're going to want to do is create a little script. And don't let that put you off. What I'm going to do here, and I'll again leave this in the description below, is this command, sudo nano, which basically is our uh, text editor. We're going to open up this um, script file. Now, it's not on your system by default. 
It's going to be here. We're going to put it in the user local bin and then we're going to call it weekly underscore clam scan dot sh because I'm going to configure this to run weekly, but I'll show you how to configure it to the schedule that you want. When you've inputted this command from the description below, you'll see that I already have a script already in here for you, which also emails me after the scan is completed and tells me if it's found any malware or not. And I'm going to show you how to do that, but you don't have to have the email part if you don't want to. So I'm going to quickly just remove this file so I can start from scratch with you and then run that command again. And then I'll be left with what you have here. Again, I'm going to put everything in the description below. And this is what we've got. This is the script. The scan target is essentially where on the system you want this script to, to tell ClamAV to scan. So we're going to leave ours with dockage. But if you wanted the whole system scanned, all your hard drives, all your mount points, everything, you just need to put a forward slash in there and it will scan absolutely everything. Now, I have a 60 uh, plus terabyte home server here. This thing was still scanning after 15 hours. So your mileage will vary. It depends exactly how much you want to scan. I just wanted to kind of test it out. It, it wasn't even completed after 15 hours. So it's a lot to go through. Um, but again, you can choose what to do when we want. Essentially, you could put it in your home directory with whatever your username is um, and whatever path you've got going on there. Just remember, it's case sensitive. The log file we're going to leave is this, which will put a log in var log clam maybe weekly scan dot log. And then your email address, whatever email address you're going to use. I'll obviously blank that out because that's my email address. But essentially, it's whatever uh, email address you want in there. Um, it'll start off by running um, a virus definitions update. It will then um, run the same command we ran manually earlier, although as part of the script, it will amend those uh, files um, and the scan target from above. And then it just does its basic check. It'll run through that. After the scan is completed, it will then run against the uh, log file. If it finds that malware was found, it will send that email. Uh, and again, if you don't want to do the email part of this, that's absolutely fine. You can literally just comment out this section here, just like that. But if you want it to uh, run like that and, and, and have it interact with you, and I'll show you how to set up the, the mail server side of things in a second, you could certainly do that. The other part of the script is that it will clean up old log files, only keeping the most recent log file, and therefore won't take uh, too much space on the system. It will then rotate those log files as well to make sure that they are up to date. Um, once you're happy with that and you've filled it all out, just do the control O on the keyboard. If you're in nano, hit enter and that's our script saved. The next part of that script is actually to make it executable. And that just basically means we have to run this command, which again, will all be in the description below. It just allows this to run as a script um, for us. The next uh, most important part um, to this script is obviously that we want it to run at a given date and time or a regular uh, schedule. To do that, we need to run this in what's called a cron job. Um, now, if you're on coming from Windows and things like that, you'll know that um, setting up tasks and schedules is basically the counterpart to a cron job on Linux. So just to give you an overview of exactly what a cron job is, uh, we're going to be running a command in a second that has a few numbers and asterisks on it. And this is what it is. Basically, the first number is minutes past the hour. The second is the hour of the day. Then you've got day of the month, month of the year, and day of the week. And essentially what this means is 0 o'clock, 2 a.m. If it was 2 p.m., it would be 14. Run every day of the month if need be, every month of the year, and especially on day zero, which in this case will be a Sunday because Sunday is a zero in uh, the cron job um, settings. So now you have an understanding of what those numbers mean, um, we can open the cron job area. Uh, there's two ways of doing this. You can either run it as sudo, the super user, or you can take away sudo and just run it as cron tab uh, on its own. We're going to run it with the super user sudo, simply because our script contains sudo inside it. Uh, and if we want everything to work the way it should be, that's the way we've got to do it. So we're going to run sudo crontab hyphen e for edit. And as you'll see at the very bottom of the list, the list, I only have one cron job running, and it is in fact the weekly uh, clamscan.sh um, script. And as I mentioned earlier on, uh, I was showing you that it will run o'clock the hour, 2 for 2 a.m., uh, every day of the month, every single month um, on day zero, which is a Sunday. 
Then we literally just put the directory and file name uh, with extension to that script. I'll have all this in the link in the description below, but essentially it's just adding that one line to the bottom. If you find you've got a few things in here, don't delete them unless you know what you're doing. Just add this to the very end of the file. So if you have already a, a lot of things here, blah, 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 whatever's going on, uh, you might have a few uh, cron jobs in there. Just leave it, those there and add this to the very bottom of the file. When you're happy with that, you can literally just do Control O to save and click Enter. That's now saved. Control X gets us out of it. And that's your cron job setup. Essentially, that's it. You have now accomplished setting up Clam AV and on a weekly schedule. If you wanted to change um, the date and time that that run, you can do it um, in a few different ways. So if I just show you, just give you some examples. So using Google Gemini here, I've put in um, the cron job that I uh, specified to you. That's the original cron job. And then I've asked it to give me some examples of how this works. The original one is, as we've said it, it's going to run um, first minute of the hour, 2 a.m. Day of the month is every day. <clears throat> Doesn't mean it's going to scan every day. It just means that we've not specified it because we put an asterisk there. Same as every month. It's going to run every month no matter what because there's an asterisk there. And then zero day of the week, Sunday, we're zero and seven hour Sunday. We've then put our command line in here. But if you wanted to change this up, say you wanted to do it at a, a daily scan at midnight, how would you change that? You'd simply just put a zero on the front, followed by another zero. So o'clock, zero minutes, the asterisks go for every day of the month, every month and every day of the week. And that's how you do your, um, you in there. Uh, forgetting um, the these are just different rotations and things like that but again just following in with the um, weekday evenings so you could run it at um, zero minutes past the hour hour 18 6 p.m every day of the month every month and then put a one through five which would then run it through monday through friday and that's how you could update that obviously just be careful you're not uh, editing the script name as gemini has done here keep it unless you you know what you're doing and if you do edit um the script name make sure you run that command to make it an executable again um which i um showed you earlier on but i will show you again essentially it would be this command you would need to change this end here to be whatever you changed it on your side so just bear that in mind so there we go. That's Clam AV set up. Um, there's our script set up. And now the important final part will be the um, mail system to show you how to set up um, the emails notifications. So if I clear the screen, essentially what you're going to want to do, obviously, as we always do, is run these pseudo app updates. You update all your files. I'm not going to do that because I already have. We're then going to install... Um, sudo apt install ssmtp mail utils that is the application that we are using here once you've installed that we're gonna and again all these uh, commands will be in the description below we're gonna run sudo nano etsy ssmtp forward slash ssmtp.conf this will all be in the description for you as well. And essentially, um, these are my details, so I'm going to blank them out. But root is going to be your email address that you use to uh, receive system emails from. Mail hub will be the SMTP um, address for your mail server. In our case, it's going to be Gmail. So that's smtp.gmail.com. 587 is the port number, which is secure TLS. Uh, you got the option then if you want to rewrite the domain. Uh, I've just left gmail.com in there. The host name, which is the, the name of our server. You can uh, find that out by just running the command host name in the terminal. Um, I've put that down there as Kflix for me. From line override, I've said yes. Start TLS, yes. And then this is where it gets a bit interesting. Now, on um, Google, like a lot of services, you're probably going to be using multi-factor authentication. If you are, they, you do have to create what's called an app password for this to work. So you're going to put your auth user, which is your actual username in here, and then the auth password. Go to google.co.uk, open your profile, go to manage your Google account. App passwords, there it is. It's the one below. Verify that's me. I've got a key pass, a pass key rather. 
Uh, and there we go. So essentially, what you would do in this instance is you could do what I've done above. I've just typed uh, an app password there, which is Ubuntu server. I've then typed that name in there, click create, and then it will spit out your password. Now, the app password will have spaces in them. When you enter the app password into your Ubuntu server um, uh, configuration file here for the SSMTP send mail configuration file, just remove those spaces. You don't want spaces. It'll be one long password. Now, keep this secure, right? This gives access to your account bypassing the multi-factor authentication. You do not want this going on the internet for people to find. Uh, because this will make it extremely easy to bypass and go straight into your account. Now, some people say that you shouldn't tie this to your primary account. You should just create a separate Gmail account for this. And I think that's not a bad call. I think I might do that myself um, in the coming days. But yeah, definitely just give that a go and put that in there. Once you're happy with that, we're going to do Control O to save the file and exit. And that's it. Your mail system is set up and ready to go. Um, if we go back to our weekly scan script and copy out the echo here, I'll leave this in the description below. We can test this is going to send us an email um, just by running this command. So if we say the body is in the quotation marks test, the subject will put as test and the email recipient will put as my own email. That will now send a test email through as you hear. And that's what the Clam AV script one will look like for you. Specifying either no malware found or if it has found malware, it will list all the infected files that it's found rather than delete them from the server because that's an important differential here as well. We're not uh, deleting these files as we find them. We're just leaving them there but telling you where they are so that you can do something. So if a false positive pops up, something like that, it doesn't actually uh, delete all those files and you don't lose something. I hope that's been another great video for you. Um, thank you very much for joining me again on KL Tech Videos. Oh, and before you leave, if you wanted to delete everything here, you wanted to get rid of uh, Clam AV completely, you can run this command, which is sudo apt get remove purge Clam AV, Clam AV daemon hyphen y, and then it removes those directories as well. And that will just get rid of everything for you for a fresh um, start. It'll get rid of all of it. Um, obviously, if you do that, it's going to remove all the logs everything associated with Clam AV. So just be bear that in mind if you wanted to keep something, back it up first. Thank you very much for joining me on this video and I'll catch you in the next one.